Yeah. Animating on the Steam Deck. I know, why? Why would you? Well, I don't know, it's a PC, so why not? You can put that on there. Maybe you want to take a break from gaming. It's like, oh, I want to animate Bouncing Ball or something. Why not? But it's actually pretty cool. And I was surprised at how well some of the scenes were actually running on that smaller machine. So today I want to show you what I did. This is Windows 10 running an SD card. I want to go through the steps and how to install it and what to do. And then I can fire up Maya, I'll fire up Blender and do a bunch of stuff and I have some other ideas that will be in future clips. So stay tuned. So let's go through it. Okay, so we are back in the review closet here and that is the setup here. So you got your Steam Deck. I have this plugged in because of the battery. I'll show you that later. So if you just boot up your Steam Deck in a normal way, it will go into SteamOS. You have your game library. It is gonna be the regular primary function of this computer gaming console type of thing. Now, when it comes to installing Windows on the Steam Deck, I followed Tom's hardware guide. I'm not gonna go through all this because I found it there. So I'm gonna link the description to that, please follow this. I actually did this one. So booty for a micro SD card, but you're gonna follow the directions on this site. You're gonna have to do something with this one and this one, and it's super easy. And especially at the SD card, um, you can see the directions are extremely simple. The only problem that you have once you're done with this is that the Wi-Fi is actually not working. So how do you go around the fact that Wi-Fi is not working? So there's a site, I'll put again the link in the description, where you download, there's a graphics card driver, there's a Wi-Fi driver, there's a Bluetooth driver, there's a bunch of stuff there. Download that, install it, and then it totally works. Then you can go online, you can check your Wi-Fi connections and everything is there. The way you wanna go and boot up from the SD card is you hold your left volume button down and then start the machine. And now we have this. So now you can choose between what's in there and the SD card here that I added. So with this one, not these, you go down, A, you confirm. I'm going to fast forward a little bit. It takes a little bit, but I don't want you to wait because apparently it has to update the system. So I am definitely going to fast forward through that. While we're doing this, I'll fast forward through the rest, but I still have to show you something. I have a smaller hub in here that has a USB-C connection, bring it into frame. You can see that you have HDMI out, you got your USB. So I have my tablet connected to that and a USB-C here for the power because I don't want to leave this without power. You have other ones like from Anchor, whatever, you can choose any, right? You got USB-C here, USB-A, you have HDMI and USB-C here. So that will totally work. There's another one that I had that has uh, additional SD cards in here. You can have an old one here technically for my iPad. You could technically plug this in here, but it's going to cover the power button which is not the best idea. And then I had this one that had USB-C to Ethernet that you have some of these where all of this is on the side and Ethernet comes out here. There are so many options in terms of hubs. And the reason why I got this one is because I wanted to connect to the web. So what happens is that when you install Windows 10 is that none of the, the important drivers are working. So when you go through the install process of Windows 10, it will ask you to check online and you can't. Like there was Wi-Fi was not working and I thought maybe you can bypass it with Ethernet. Well, you couldn't. So you, just, you can't set up anything because you have no Wi-Fi, you can't go online. So let me password into this. And there you go, here's the environment. So I can fire up my, uh, I have a bunch of stuff here. It's early days. I, I tinkered around with little things, not dramatically. But I just wanted to see, does Maya work? And does Blender work? Like what else does work? I had to rejig some things because of course, after the Windows update, some of the things didn't work because I have that extra display out and then Maya was stuck on the other display. So I had to go back and do some things. But we are back here. Let's just open a generic bouncing ball scene that I have somewhere. There you go. And as you can see, the, you know, it's all very snappy, fast. All my hotkeys here work. Don't need this here. And there you go. You got your bouncing ball. You can check it out. Of course, you know, this should be light. I mean, this is my, the, the test of, is this going to work? So let's do orthographic side on here and go back. And there you go. You got your bouncing ball, nice and fluid. I mean, if there's one thing you can do for sure, it's going to be bouncing balls and you can have, you know, everything is working here in terms of my hotkeys, things on and off here. There you go, on, off. There's some error, not sure yet what that is. Well, I think that's pretty cool. It's very exciting. Now let's close this. Don't want to save. And this is a brand new installation, obviously on a brand new system. And guess what? It crashes. <laughs> 
Every time I close 2020, it crashes. I'm very confused. Whatever, let's close this here. So let's launch Blender. I'm not gonna pretend to know how to use it, but I wanted to see, well, if you open up an existing scene and you have this here, it totally works. It's also really cute. And you can also have a scene that's a more complicated one. And you have this here. Now, if you play this with all the lighting and everything, it's not exactly the fastest. But it's cool to see that if you are a Blender user, you're going to have a lot more to tinker with and to try out and to make it faster. But I don't want it to boot it up and see how it works. And it does, it works. But yeah, I mean, other than that, everything functions as you would expect. You got everything here, your drives work. You can go online if you want. There you go, a little plug. <laughs> you can watch this, full screen. And you get a double dose of JD Lecture and Tech Preview. Let's start at Maya and actually switch the setup and I can show you more. So if you have the proper USB-C hub in a way, right, you have multiple connections there, you can connect that via HDMI to another monitor. Now, when I do play the scene just on the Steam Deck, it's a lot faster than if you have a second monitor running. That starts to tax the graphics card that's built in there. But it's still okay. It's not too bad. It runs fairly smoothly. I thought it's going to be a lot worse. Now, depending on the monitor, you have to adjust the resolution. Maybe you have a wide screen one like this one where again you have to kind of tinker what works best for you but it, technically you can have any type of output there and you, it's going to be at 1080p if you want to but you can scale up depending on what monitor you have so it does support higher resolution which is pretty cool so it's going to be really interesting how it evolves as new drivers will be accessible audio drivers are missing right now so that's a bit of a problem you have to listen over bluetooth headphones and even if you have it connected to another monitor it's still like the touch screen still works uh, when you have this out you can still have a mouse on it you can have keyboards, a bunch of stuff. One thing I want to test as well is how well it actually renders and how long it takes. But I think that's going to be a clip for another time. Just kind of testing out the kind of the rendering power of it. And why not? The fan is pretty loud though. But all in all, I was really surprised. It's, it has performed a lot better than I thought. Now, one thing I still want to do is map these extra buttons here, right? You got these guys, you got shoulder buttons, all of that, and you got all of this going on. And right now, I didn't do anything. Something that is actually working is this button here. This is a right click. And I checked online so far, I haven't seen people that have been successful with it, but also haven't gone too far into researching that. But I would love to just take away the tablet and keyboard, obviously not all the time, but it would be kind of neat to see if you can configure all these buttons and you have a trackpad as well and have that function in terms of clicks, right clicks, uh, you know, keyboard strokes, stuff like that. So you could technically just animate using these buttons. Again, why would you, why not? I just wanna see how this works. And maybe you can do a little bouncing ball test just using these buttons. I'm, I'm interested if that works. Now, if you have a Steam Deck and you have figured out how to map Windows functions, stuff like that to these extra buttons, let me know, very curious. And there's a bunch of stuff I still wanna test, especially one specific thing I'm not gonna mention yet because I'm not quite sure if it's gonna work. But if it does, I think it would be really cool because it's like a portable wire Wi-Fi, it's a smaller than a laptop. And I think for some usage that I have, it would be really cool. So stay tuned for that. And maybe subscribe if you don't want to miss that upcoming clip. And that's kind of that for me. Maybe a silly clip, but why not? I thought it was kind of cool taking a little break from gaming and testing out Windows stuff on the Steam Deck. As always, thanks for watching till the very end. I appreciate your patience. And that's it for me. I'll see you in my next upload.